Hi, my name's Phil. I'd like to talk about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the latest strop Elon Musk is having with our government as he's now throwing a level 11 toddler tantrum about not being invited to this year's tech investment meeting next month. Comes at the same time as Kemi Badenoch gushes with praise for the Twitter and Tesla owner but she appears to stand alone amongst the Tory leadership contenders there. But first for daily political commentary please click the subscribe button so you don't miss out. So yeah, space Karen melting down again. Uh, last year, he was basically guest of honour at this tech summit Rishi Sunak organised, and um, which Labour are continuing, but without loudmouth, ignorant Nepo babies in attendance. You may remember the more cringeworthy feature of the summit last year being Rishi Sunak with Elon Musk having a centre stage talk where they both tried to sound like they knew what they were talking about and yet kept contradicting one another. Because let's be clear, neither Sunak nor Musk know the first thing about tech. They just know how to make money out of people who do. Mind you, Musk is not exactly adding value to his tech enterprises right at this moment, is he? But like I say, people thought the basic idea was a good one, so it's continuing. Even though there's still criticism this year, they're saying, well, now that it's coming before the budget, that's not ideal either, but, you know, whatever. But the new government have certainly not invited Space Karen along. Interesting that he then decided to rage against the decision by saying, and there was a particular quote, he said, I don't think anyone should go to the UK when they're releasing convicted paedophiles in order to imprison people for social media posts. Now, obviously, this is not occurring, but there's a couple of interesting points in the statement. So first of all, think about what this is a reaction to. It's a reaction to him not being invited to an international tech summit in the UK. So he's obviously upset at not being invited. The implication being that if he had been invited, he would attend. Yet he says he doesn't think anyone should come here. It's a classic case of, I, I, I didn't want to come here anyway and no one else should. You're not leaving me, I'm leaving you. Another reminder that we've got someone with no emotional maturity in charge of a major social media platform. What could go wrong? But the second thing which stood out was... This talk about releasing paedophiles. And, you know, it didn't just say something like, oh, releasing dangerous criminals, which also isn't happening, but releasing dangerous criminals to put people in prison for writing a social media meme or something. They didn't even say that. It was releasing paedophiles. And I think, I, I remember back to when, for me, Musk roast his man babyishness basically first drew my attention. Didn't really know much about him before then. And it was, it was some years ago now. And there was an emergency in Thailand. Some, some kids were trapped, right? And he wanted to boost his own ego. He wanted to leverage the emergency. So, uh, I'm going to offer this solution to this emergency. But in the event, they just sent in some rescuers. And one of the rescuers, who was also British, you know, um, <coughs> Musk described as a paedophile. Can't remember the exact term he used, but the same sort of thing. And I'm thinking, has he got a bit of an obsession here? Should we, should we be worried here? But anyway, aside from that, Musk is trying to say that he's been targeted by the Labour government because he's against oppression of free speech. Now, there are two levels of nonsense here. The first, which is more nuanced, is that, I mean, throughout most of Europe, we, we actually accept, we believe that someone's right to say something is less important than someone's right to live in safety and dignity. So if what you have to say causes harm to another, then keep it behind closed doors, would you? Even Americans who seem to have a more purist attitude to free speech, which is why they literally allow actual Nazis with swastika flags to march down the street. But they've got, they've got certain concepts enshrined in law as well. Like, you know, you've got defamation law exists in America. Yeah, it's in a weaker form than some other countries, but it's there, which means that Americans at the very least believe that, well, as long as you're rich enough to actually take someone to court you should be able to shut down certain forms of speech. But the second level of nonsense has got no nuance. Musk actively suppresses political views on Twitter, which are at odds with his own. So there is a sense in imagining, so if you were just looking at this casually, you may think, you know, so, so Musk took Twitter over and then he allowed previously banned far-right voices to return to Twitter. So you may just look at that casually and think, well, he's got this weird, purist, no boundaries attitude to freedom of speech. He's just letting everyone have their say and, and to hell with it, right? But that's not what's happened. Analysts keep showing that what he's doing is he's artificially 
amplifying certain views on Twitter and artificially suppressing others. So Musk is not championing free speech. He's just changing which speech should be amplified and which should be throttled. Which brings me on to Kemi Badnock. Now, she has reportedly said, she apparently in an, in, with an interview for The Spectator, which I'm not reading, so she'd reportedly said she's a huge fan of Musk and that he had been fantastic for freedom of speech. Now, there's a sense in which you think, well, OK, it, it might make sense for someone trying to champion far right views aligning with Space Karen on this. However, when other leadership contenders were asked for their views, apparently they were not so full of praise. Jenrick said he didn't have a strong opinion on Musk, but wouldn't be wanting to book any like personal meetings with him anytime soon. Cleverly called out Musk's attempt to shut down voices he disagreed with. So he cleverly sort of showing that he's well aware that Musk isn't actually promoting freedom of speech at all. He's just shutting down some voices and promoting others. Tugan Hat talks more about the dangers of malign states using the internet for propaganda. The implication being that he's worried about how Putin in particular is benefiting from Musk's ownership of Twitter. So why is Badenoch standing alone on this one? Well, although we often see a lot of parallels between the Conservative Party and the Republican Party, and both have shifted to the extreme right in recent years at pretty much the same time, and, and backed by pretty much the same people, so it's not really a coincidence, but public attitudes in the different countries are not quite in alignment there. First of all, our attitudes to freedom of speech are not quite the same. Second, polling suggests that people don't think Musk's takeover of Twitter has been good for the platform. There's no obvious evidence that Musk is a useful person to have on side when it comes to electoral strategy. So it may be that Badenoch is gambling that there are some winnable votes out there, because just because a, a clear majority of people think Musk has been bad for Twitter in this country, there are some who think he's been good. Maybe she thinks those can be some of her target voters, whether amongst party members for the leadership contest or general voters for the next election. You know, maybe she thinks aligning with Musk actually can have strategic benefit. Uh, and that those who do disapprove of him, she won't necessarily lose their votes because they would not base their voting behaviour on something like this, right? That is possible. Although I'm quite sure Badenoch has not commissioned any detailed polling on that, it would not be worth the money at this point. So she's likely guessing. And all of the other leadership contenders, I mean, they did have different reasons for wanting Musk at arm's length. Jenrix was more general, you know, ha saying he has got no strong opinions one way or the other, but isn't looking for a meeting with him. He's basically suggesting, I don't think he's useful to me. So he probably just doesn't think Musk is, a, is popular enough to win him votes within the party or outside it. And he's probably right about that. Cleverly seemed more worried about the 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 more philosophical aspects of it, the damage and impact on society of shutting down certain voices, even if they're ones you disagree with. Tugan Hart was on more the national security side of things. So depending on who wins the Tory leadership contest, and even if they did win the next election and reinstall a Conservative government, it may well be that Musk still isn't being invited um, to these future summits either. And not because he's against oppression of free speech, but actually because he is an oppressor of free speech. But then one of his possible heroes had something to say about that, didn't he? Accuse the other side of that which you are guilty. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, you can join for memberships. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll see you later.